Hello again friends and welcome back to another MariaDB video tutorial. In this episode we're going to look at the basics of creating stored procedures in MariaDB. If you want to learn more about Java and how you can grow your skills as a Java developer, please subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell so that you'll be notified when I release new content. A stored procedure is a subroutine that's actually stored in the database. Stored procedures are extremely fast as they're stored on the server where you can take advantage of caching. They are also portable in that they are executable on any platform that runs MariaDB and they're always available as source code in the database. So let's look at how we would create a stored procedure in MariaDB. Today I'm going to use a product called dBeaver. And dBeaver is a database administration tool which has a community edition that is free to download and use. And it allows us to do all of the administrative tasks such as creating tables and views and indexes and procedures, which is what we're looking at today. Now, after opening up dBeaver, I'm going to then right click on procedures and create new procedure. I'm going to give the procedure a name, get all employees. The name is case insensitive, so you don't have to worry about upper and lower case. But to make it easier to read, I am using the uh, camel case with the first letter of each word capitalized. Once you've entered the name of the procedure, click OK, and a window opens up with the create procedure along with the name of the database dot the name of the procedure and a begin and end block. In that begin and end block is where I'm going to create the body of the stored procedure. And in this stored procedure, I'm simply going to use a select statement to get some data out of the employees table. So the select statement I'm going to use is select ID comma employee ID first name, last name, from employees, and a semicolon. This is our stored procedure. Now if I right click and say save, it shows us the actual code that's going to be run against the MariaDB database. Now let's just take a moment and I'll explain what this is. First, it does a drop on the procedure that we're creating if it currently exists. Then you'll see a line that says delimiter, and in this case they've chosen to use two dollar signs as a delimiter. Now why this is necessary is, be, is that the MariaDB client uses a semicolon as a delimiter. And since we're using the semicolon within the body of our stored procedure, we're switching the MariaDB client delimiter temporarily to something other than the semicolon. And that allows us then to have this entire block entered and only executed by the MariaDB client once it sees our new delimiter, which is the dollar sign. Once we've executed that, we then switch the delimiter back to the standard semicolon. So let's now click on the persist button to save that and it's been saved. Now I'll go to SQL editor and open an SQL console. In order now to execute that stored procedure, we use the call keyword, C-A-L-L, -L, and then the name of the stored procedure, get all employees. And the open and close round brackets are automatically included. They're not strictly speaking necessary if you don't have any parameters for the stored procedure. Now I will execute the stored procedure and there we see the results of executing the stored procedure. We get the ID, the employee ID, first name and last name for every employee record in our employees table. Our first example of a stored procedure simply got all of the employee records in our employees table. Stored procedures can also have parameters such that we can pass a parameter to a stored procedure that can be used in our 
SQL code within the begin and end block. Let's create another stored procedure. And this time we're just going to call this get employee singular. Click OK. And in the begin and end round brackets, we're going to enter the keyword in, meaning that this is an input parameter. Parameters can be input, output, or in out. So we're passing in a parameter, and that parameter is going to be, I'll proceed it with the letter I for input, and EMP ID, so employee ID. Now, within the begin and end block, I'm going to go back to our other stored procedure and just copy the SQL select statement, which I'll then paste into our new stored procedure. And now I'm going to modify that select statement so that it uses our input parameter. So we're going to now not select all employees from the employee table, but only the employee that matches the input parameter IMPID. So we'll say select ID employee ID, first name, last name from employees where ID equals IEMPID. Let's right click and save. Again, we get the SQL preview of our stored procedure. Click on the persist button and the stored procedure is successfully created. Let's open up an SQL console and then we'll execute our new stored procedure. Call get employee. And I'm going to pass the number three, which will in turn get the employee record with the ID number three. So let's execute that stored procedure call. And here we have the number three, Sally Kwan. If we go to our table, the employees table, and go to data, we'll see that number three is Sally Kwan. Let's look at one final example. And in this example, I'm going to use an output parameter in our stored procedure. So let's right click on procedures, create new procedure. And for the procedure name, I'm going to call it get employee count. And that's simply going to get a count of the number of records in our employee table. Click on the OK button. As I just mentioned, we're going to use an output parameter. So the type is out. I'm going to call the parameter emp count for employee count. And that is of type integer. And then in the begin end block, I'm going to use a simple select. Select count bracket star bracket into and I'm going to use our output parameter. So it's into emp count from employees. Semicolon. Let's now right click and save. Click persist. It was successfully created. First, we'll execute the stored procedure, get employee count which puts the value of the number of records in our employee table into the output parameter emp count. Next, we'll do a select using the output parameter emp count. Select at emp count. We'll execute and we should get the number 41, which is the number of records in our employee table. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any videos when I release new content. Thanks for hanging out again today. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, please stay safe and keep on coding.